complete. Please ensure the integrity of your multi-purpose oh, exploration suit is at one hundred percent. Good to be back. Yes. Remember, efficiency ah, first. Efficiency. Godspeed. And Godspeed indeed. Satisfactory. Something I could call my second job is one of the best resource gathering, factory constructing, upgrade sims in all of existence. And it's still an alpha. There's not much story here except what's seen through some crumbs of world building. Screw Koroslev. And that's fine by me. Because all I want to do is push the big red button. And don't worry, that'll happen plenty of times. Ah. Brain chemicals. Excellent stimulation every time. The whole time, actually. Game responsibly, folks, because this is one that kicks hard and is substantially hard to kick. You need to play this game. Let me take you through some of my experiences to illustrate why. You start the game landing gracefully on a new planet with a twinkle in your eye and capitalism in your heart. From there, you're guided by a computerized voice AI, Ada that helps you understand the fundamentals of which you'll build your planetary resource-sucking empire. Things begin slow. You've got a few tools to help you locate some basic minerals, and in real Minecraftian fashion, you can go out there and physically obtain them yourself. But that's boring. That's smooth brain. Get enough for a portable miner, and now you're just a gopher. Still small brain, though. Go research yourself a Mark I miner, and we have technology. You'll get more instructions, and slowly your mind will adapt as you complete milestone-type missions. Hey, the next milestone requires iron plates. You can make that with iron ingots that you smelt from iron ore. And you know what you can do with those plates besides submit it to the milestone, right? Combine it with screws that are made from that rod we just taught you about, and you've got an advanced plate that can be used to turn into a constructor, where you'll begin the automation process. Though, automation comes at a price, that being each machine takes a specific amount of electricity to run. And to kick off your power grade, you'll start by being a deforestation specialist. Because the bottom of the power totem pole is biomaster or advanced wood and leaf munchers. Those will last you a bit, but later on they won't be enough. And you'll need 10 times as many to keep up with your energy consumption. Later still, 20 times, 30 times. When your operation is constantly growing, you and your factory's need for power is deviously insatiable. The last thing the tutorial introduces to complete your automation fantasies is the Mark I conveyor belts, and those can bring your harvested or created resources to storage or other machinery. From here, the game only becomes exponentially more insane. As you complete milestones, you'll get recipes for more advanced parts that are needed to complete other milestones. You'll get machines called assemblers that will combine two parts into a single part. Later, you'll get more advanced version that requires four types of items to create a single item. On top of that, machines require a certain amount of energy to work, and recipes selected within them can vary with how many parts will equal an item. The game converts this into a per minute cost to further help you understand how automation factors into your machines constantly running. I must confess that Satisfactory is secretly a math game because, for example, if I have two foundries producing 20 steel ingots each and have two constructors where one needs 15 steel ingots and the other needs 25, how do I combine both lines of 20 steel ingots per minute and split them so that each constructor gets the amount of resources they need to be at 100% efficiency while still being limited by only two speeds of conveyor belts and one splitter which splits the resources 50% even each time. Now while each individual problem might be easy to deal with at first, remember that at one point you have an entire ecosystem running. Changing one variable could break any one of your production lines. And when you're dealing with highly advanced parts, working on recipes at tier six or greater, the math problem gets four times longer with at least two to four times as many variables. Things start to get hazy and I usually find myself returning to monkey, jumping on all of my machines or just absolutely dissociating. Because I just can't comprehend what in the H I'm doing anymore. And that might sound stupid, but nothing feels better than looking at the viewing window for my machines and seeing that crispy 100% efficiency after solving a huge problem. Here's a pro tip, get that color gun. 
and mark your machines when they're 100% efficient. Or mark them as you follow recipes from skiffcalculator.com, which is absolutely a must for when you're trying to be 100% efficient during the end game. There's no signs in this game, so color coding is your best friend. Sometimes, instead of returning to monkey, I'll take up some research on the side in this machine called the MAM, which has its own research tree that can give you additional inventory or equipment slots and helps you unlock some tools and some really useful structures. Now, exploring is key to filling out the MAM, and you'll find all sorts of fruit, wildlife, angry wildlife. There's these annoying spiders. Are you fat? Whoa! <laughs> Run! Oh, we take it a stand. We take it a stand now, boys. We take it a stand. Come here, bye. <laughs> if you have arachnophobia, though, you can turn on arachnophobia mode, and it turns them all into JPEGs of cats uh, with little cat noises. But honestly, that was legitimately more horrifying to me when I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> So uh, take your pick. Exploring will also lead you to drop pods, which have these hard drives that contain alternate recipes, and they are game changer for how you can do things, so do not sleep on those. Ah, and yes, the slugs. These slugs you find will give you the power to overclock your machinery. Sure, it costs a bit more power, but you just might need a few more liters of water flowing through the pipes and make sure you have what you need to power your coal burning army. Or maybe you don't want to find another resource node 1500 meters away. Very useful stuff. Anyway, it's fun to see your operations slowly start to spiral out of control into conveyor belt madness with all sorts of floors and stories, but it's okay. You live here. You know where things go and what they're doing. It's nicely paced because they don't take you from baby to behemoth instantly. So you really don't feel the difference because you're only adding a little bit every play session. Even still, while the progression is light, you have your suite of problems along the way that you need to resolve. Just unlock the requirements for a new orc type? Sorry, your power network ain't big enough to mine and process that. Develop base building parts. Create a fortress. Run out of room? Commit a little deforestation. Run out of biomass? Commit huge deforestation. Send materials off to space. You'll need to send more crap up that to unlock more tiers and buildings. Eventually, you'll be feeling like a well-oiled machine. But then, they introduce the unthinkable. Yeah, you know you got all this? Well, that's great and all. Here's a minor Mark II that literally doubles all the resource nodes. Everything you have here, well, that's cute. But you can double it now. Have a nice day. Keep that fun little thought in your back pocket. And not to spoil anything, but there's a Mark III miner that triples the amount. You can imagine how insane the end game gets. I like to watch people on Twitch just to just get a feel for it, just to feel something. There's this feeling of dread almost that comes with knowing your potential and what you must do. Like, man, I just did all that. Now I can double it? Dang. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I can do that. Or another scenario, heck, I need to create two new resource lines to merge into this machine that needs four resources per minute to even make a single thing. All right, I'm out. <laughs> and then you'll turn off the game. But you'll be back the next day. Why? Because this game has a grip on you like a drug. You'll be excited to figure it all out. And before you know it, you've done it. You've had a great time doing it, and it's glorious. You'll look back on your creation in all of its madness and smile. Welcome to Satisfactory. Now, if you don't want to endure the comprehension load alone, you have multiplayer, which isn't always perfect. Hey, it's an alpha, but I've had at least a solid 20 hours of an amazing time so far. And even still, while it is in alpha, it's getting frequent updates to not only squash bugs, but to add major inclusions to content. Recently, they just added tier eight into the game, which adds and some other quality of life features and buildings of the game. They even have seasonal events, which is why my red button was a sleigh instead of a rocket ship. Uh, in conclusion, Satisfactory is an amazing game, of which I give a very high score and rate as a name brand product for its quality and endless hours of entertainment it's provided me. Please support this game by purchasing it and giving it a try. It's $30. You can usually find it on sale for 20 to 25 if you're anything like me, or you enjoy factory sims, or related genres, please give it a try. You will not be disappointed. Thank you for watching this video. Consider becoming a connoisseur and supporting the channel by subscribing. Let's see if we can hit 20 subscribers with this one.
If you're interested in more satisfactory gameplay or want to see a tour of my factory as it currently stands, come and check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the name brand underscore. Also linked in the description, I stream Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. If you miss me, you can find my past streams on my VOD and Extras channel. Okay, thanks, and goodbye.